Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, and this is our success mentorship call, number 157. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us today. As you know, we uh, do our Saturday morning classes, and much of what we do is based on our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success. And uh, one of the most interesting things about our book is the fact that the principles in this book can help you be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have whatever you want to have. Our topic for today is decisions are the blueprints for your success. I'll say that again. Decisions are the blueprint for your success. Wow. That's a very interesting concept, folks, because when we consider life, we are where we are because of the decisions we make and the actions we take. But the goal today is really to share that your decisions are just like a blueprint. You know, an architect creates a blueprint from which you can build a skyscraper. Your decisions create a blueprint from which you build your life. Welcome, Mark. Welcome, Kenya. Thank you for joining us this morning. So I'd like to open with a quote. And our quote today is from Trent Shelton. And very powerful quote. It says, the right decisions are always the hardest to make. But they must be made in order to live the life you deserve. I'll read that again. The right decisions are always the hardest to make, but they must be made in order to live the life you deserve. Wow. I tell you, folks, that's an interesting thought because those decisions that we make, so many times those decisions that we make are so difficult. But once we've made them, something happens. The universe rushes in to confirm that decision. Before we go any further, I'd love to do our meditation for this morning. Let's see, we have some of our folks joining us. Excellent. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, we have people joining us on our call today. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, let's see. Let me do this a minute, do a little... Housekeeping, <laughs> beautiful, okay, all right. Okay, I think we have everybody joined in now. <laughs> you know, the, the beautiful thing is that, uh, yeah, here we go, okay, all right. Okay, the, the, let us do our meditation and get us prepared for this journey. Let's just sit right up in our seats for a moment. Put our feet flat on the floor. Our hands palm down upon our knees. Closing our outer eyes. Opening our inner eyes. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slow. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. I am at peace with myself. Let us say that together. I am at peace with myself. Once more. I am at peace with myself. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. My mind 
is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Let us say that together. My mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. that just sink in. All right. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, I like to think about the, the idea of decisions, that our decisions are really the, the blueprint for our lives. And when I was preparing to this, the the thought of what is the, the difference between a, a decision and a choice. When you go into a restaurant, they give you a menu and on that menu are listed all of the different choices available. And when you look at the, the choices, you may be looking for something really specific. So this may be your day to look for a, vegetarian chitlins. Now they're hard to find, <laughs> okay? But you're looking on that menu for vegetarian chitlins and you see it and aha, you make a decision to order vegetarian chitlins. And that's really how, what life is all about. You have a menu of things going on before you, a menu of activities, a menu of possibilities. The moment you choose one then, you have taken a particular path down a particular road. And once you made that choice and a decision to do so, the decision to, is confirmed by your actions. I love the, uh, the, the, uh, the dictionary definition of, of, um, of uh, decision. And the, the, the dictionary definition says this, Decision is the cognitive process resulting in the selection of a belief or course of action among several alternative possibilities. I'll read that again. The decision-making process is a cognitive process resulting in the selection of a belief or course of action among several alternative possibilities. Wow, that sounds kind of sterile, doesn't it? A decision is simply a choice that you make as to how you're going to allocate your time, as to how you're going to do a particular thing. There's a, a story, a young man, I often tell of the young man who wanted to know the secret of life. And so he goes to the, uh, meet one of the great ones, one of those people who uh, achieve greatness, a multi-millionaire, maybe even a multi-billionaire. And he asks him, he says, what is the secret of life? And the man says, the secret of life is right decision. That sounds pretty simple. It says, well, and how, how do you learn to make right decisions? And the man said, through experience. The young man was a little uh, kind of somewhat disappointed. He said, well, how do you get experience? And the older gentleman said, through wrong decisions. And so this is really what life is about. It's about making the right decisions to create the right outcomes for you. So if I gave you a simple formula, right decisions equals right life. Good decisions equal good life. Great decisions equal great life. So what is this process then? How do we make decisions. What is this decision-making process? Well, one of the first things is that we must recognize that every decision has consequences. And so when we make decisions, it's not just a, you might say, um, 
a, a, a thought process of just making a choice. But to really evaluate a decision, you must be aware not only of the choice, but also the consequences of the choice, because every decision has consequences. A decision is like a seed. When you plant that seed in your consciousness, it grows in accordance with the nature of the seed. And so if you make a decision to do something negative, you decide to go rob a bank. That seed has consequences. You may get away and live the rest of your life in fear of being discovered. You may get shot at the bank. <laughs> you may end your life at the bank. You may hurt other people inadvertently. And so the idea is that every decision has consequences. And so when we start to look at decisions, we have to also factor in the consequences. So what is this decision-making process? Number one, you must decide exactly what you want. So when you're sitting in the restaurant of life and you have the menu there, ah, item number one, go to college. Item number two, go to service. Item number three, get a job. Item number four, get married. This whole list, the smorgasbord of possibilities. And so you have to decide, you have to make a decision. You have to decide what you really want. Once you decide what you really want, you can move forward. Many people get bogged down in just the possibilities. They see so many choices, so many possibilities that they can't choose one. They can't make a decision to go for one. That's a tough way to be. Sometimes we call it paralysis through analysis. They're so busy analyzing what's going on, analyzing the possibilities that they can never make a decision to go for it. So this idea of deciding what you want, what do you want in your life? Do you want more money? Do you want more happiness? Do you want better relationships? Do you want to be more creative? In other words, you must make a decision for what you desire. Number two, you must define exactly the objective that you've just decided to go for. So once you've said, all right, I'll take the... Um, <laughs> the vegetarian chitlins. Okay, I, I just thought about that. Once you decide, you decide, okay, I, I want to um, start a business. That's my decision. So now define the objective. Define it in such a way that you're clear about each and every aspect of it. Decide, define it in such a way that you know how it moves, how it looks, how it smells, how it tastes, that you know everything about that which you want especially in a sensory nature, in a sensory capacity. You can feel it. Man, when I'm happy, I know how I'm going to feel. When I'm rich, I know how I'm going to feel. When I'm in a relationship, I know how I'm going to feel. So you define it in such minute detail that you can feel it, you can smell it, that you can literally experience it as your desired outcome. You see, the first law of success says, a mind shall have whatsoever it thinks in its heart. And so in order to achieve your goals, you have to think it and you have to feel it. And in great details. You know, the Habakkuk says, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. So this idea of defining what you want, defining it in great detail now, helps you to confirm that the decision is the right one, but also to give you a complete vision of what that decision really means, especially the consequences. The third step in decision-making is to believe in the answer. What do I mean? You see, many times we'll state something we want to do, be or have. We'll state a goal. 
but inside there's self-doubt. My friend Kenya is a personal trainer, an athlete, former football player. And one of the things you do as an athlete is you have to be absolutely convinced that you have the ability to do whatever it is. If you're a quarterback, you have to have believe in yourself to the, to the extent that you can throw that ball exactly where you want it to be. You have to believe in yourself with such strength or degree that doubt cannot enter the picture. You see, doubt is like a weed. Self-doubt is the worst weed of all because self-doubt procrastinates. Self-doubt paralyzes you. So in this decision-making process, in order for you to get where you want to go, you have to believe in it with such strength or degree that you literally become magnetic to attract it into your space. And then the fourth key, and this is interesting, don't ask how. Once you have decided to go for it. Once you have defined exactly what it is that you're going for, once you have believed and created such belief and passion in yourself for that which you're seeking, it cannot fail to happen. So that's why when we say don't ask how, it means that once you've done that, then act with confidence. Many times people will make a decision. They'll, they'll have defined what they want. They'll say how much they believe it and they'll act. But inside that self-doubt may be undermining them, keeping them from accomplishing what they want to do. So as we think about this now, once we have done this, once we have decided what we want, once we've defined it clearly, once we believe it in our hearts, and once we act on it, we get results. So now let's go back to this architect analogy. When you're an architect, an architect, the, the, the role of an architect is to literally create a detailed representation of the structure that he or she wants to create. See, an architect is, is actually responsible for translating somebody's vision. You see, the, it, it may not be the architect's vision when a person, for example, the people who wanted to build the Empire State Building, one of their goals was to build the tallest building in the world. And so they then went to an architect and an architect is a person whose job is to take somebody's vision and convert, convert that vision into a very detailed blueprint, which is a plan that you can act on. Without the blueprint, you can't build the building. You may try without a blueprint, you can get up about 40 stories and realize you're off and the fifth floor and the steps are crooked. So this idea of the architect, the architect has to have a picture of what the building looks like outside, what the building looks like inside. When you look at an architectural drawing, a final drawing, it has so many subsets, so many small pieces. And each one of those little pieces, this is the way, way the doors are. The architect must know in his mind how much space it needs for the door to swing. The, the codes, how big the rooms have to be, how often you have to have, how many feet between the electric sockets. In your life, in our lives, we have to become the architects of our dreams. Just as that architect sees the big vision, you must see the big vision of your dream. Once you've decided to go for it now, you must take that big vision and break it down just like the architect into the lines and the angles and the, to, so that, that that vision that you have defined is so concise that you can act on it. Even with the greatest blueprint, if the builder, the person who actually starts to knock and nail and dig the holes and whatnot, He's got to believe that that, that that architect drew an accurate blueprint. All the construction person has to do is follow the blueprint. So in our lives, we are actually, we are the person who has the vision. 
We're the architect, the person who's charged to translate that vision into a very detailed plan of operation, detailed schematic. We're also the builder <laughs> whose job is to come in and find the de follow the details of the blueprint. So it's amazing, folks. I mean, we have that ability. We are all these things in one. And we are, when we approach our lives from that angle, from that architect perspective, we are literally approaching in a very systematic fa fashion. It really sounds different. It really sounds not simplistic. It really sounds that you can, that it's easy that you have the ability to create the skyscraper that is your dreams. The skyscraper that is the life you desire to live. What's the catch as they say, where's the beef? How do we go astray? How do things not happen the way we want them to happen? Well, there are four aspects, there are four keys to creating that skyscraper that is your life. You, as the architect of your life, as an architect has a pen and pens and, and rulers and they hire draftsmen to draw all the little detailed drafting, you have to do all that in your mind. And there are four things that can either enhance or undermine your dream. Number one, your thoughts that the moment you make a decision, that decision is translated into the thoughts in your mind. Earl, Earl Nightingale says, we become what we think about most of the time. So each decision is like a thought in our minds that we are now committed to manifest. Number two, each decision is communicated through our feelings. Reverend Ike always says, feelings get the blessing. And so once we have cre created that vision of the life we desire, we have to have feelings that are congruent with that vision. We can't be thinking in our thoughts, success and abundance and feeling in our hearts, unworthiness. A part of our journey is to clean house, to straighten out all the stuff that's in our consciousness that doesn't need to be there. As a person, we are constantly pulling up weeds. Sandra's a gardener. And she was showing me the other day, she has a beautiful flower pot with um, ivy in it. So now this flower pot is dirt that we collected, that we put in the pot and she planted the ivy. And yet we come back and there are weeds growing in it. I didn't plant the weeds, she didn't plant the weeds, the ivy didn't plant the weeds. What? The natural aspect of life, the yin yang part of the universe says that wherever there's positivity, there's negativity. Wherever there's sunlight, there's darkness. So wherever there's growth, there's weeds. And so a part of this process of implementing your, your desires and implementing the decision that you've made to go for it and to do whatever you desire to do is to pull up the weeds, is to be very diligent in pulling up the weeds, those negative emotions that undermine you, the fear of criticism. So that the moment somebody says that, oh, you want to fly as the Wright brothers. I mean, if, if, if God meant you to fly, you would have wings. Be undermined by that emotion of the fear of criticism. That the moment you say you want to do something great, you're going to attract weeds and bugs. <laughs> You know, living, growing up in the country, you ever notice that when you approach a house and the, and the light comes on the front door on the, on the porch, all of a sudden you see bugs and gnats and the sky, I mean, everything flying toward the light. And that is the, the way we are. Once we make a decision to go for it, we literally attract weeds. We attract negativity. So we have to realize that and clean house. The third thing, the third key to implementing our decisions to build the skyscraper that is our life is our habits. We can be thinking it, we can be feeling it, but our habits are the manifestation of the action cycle that we create for ourselves. And so if our habits are a habit of tardiness, if our habits are a habit of um, disor disorganization, 
whatever our habits are, our habits can undermine the implementation of the decision to build a skyscraper that is our lives. The fourth thing that can keep us from building, can either help us build the skyscraper or keep us from building the skyscraper, is our relationships. When the architect draws the blueprint, he employs draftsmen. You know, now it's all done by computer, but when I was in school, the draftsmen were the, the people who had the, the, the slide rules and the, the um, angles and the circumference and the, um, all of those tools of the, of the draftsmen, they drew the lines and they drew it to scale. When that architect brings those draftsmen and they do their part, and then you have the electrical schematic and they come and they do their part. In creating the dreams, in creating the life of our dreams, we have to have a team. In the beginning, we often do all those things ourselves. <laughs> but in order to create the harmonic vibration necessary to bring about the manifestation of big dreams, you have to have a team, people who can work with you, people who believe in you, people who can enhance what you're already doing, to, as they say, to blow you up. So that you become totally attractive, pulling into your space everything that you need. You know, the law of the mastermind says when two or more are gathered on one accord, I am among them. One plus one is more than two. And so once you have made a decision, a part of that process is to have the people around you who enhance what you're doing, who can help and who can multiply your efforts. So our initial statement was decisions are the blueprint for your life. It's absolutely true. To summarize this piece today, we make a decision. Our life is created by the decisions we make. That is a game, as they say, I like the, I love the matrix because that is the matrix in which we live. You cannot not play, <laughs> okay? The fact that you're alive means that you're in the matrix of life. And so therefore, everything you do has consequences. So when you make a positive, when you make a decision, period, it has consequences. But when you fail to make a decision, that is a decision and that has consequences. So many people live their lives reacting to failures of the past where they were supposed to do things like one of the, the great tragedies of procrastination is that the longer and longer you put something off, the worse it gets. So when you could have sent the light bill in, <laughs> on the 1st so that by the 28th, it wouldn't be a problem. Now it's the 27th and you, your options are changed. You can't sit, put it in the mail. Now you've got to go down and stand in the line and you, it's a terrible rainy day and you got to go out in the rain because otherwise you'll be in the dark. So the decisions you make literally have consequences that create the life you desire. So your decisions are the blueprint for your life. Your decisions are based on four keys. Number one, it's based on choosing, as they say, choose this day, decide this day what you will do. That once you decide to do it, you then must define it in great detail. You must describe it in great detail as that architect so that you can see each and every portion of that building that is in your mind. You must believe that you can do it. You must believe that you have the power to create that building exactly the way you want it. And then you must act on it with confidence. That when you can do these four things, then the decisions you make can create the life of your dreams. When you can now take this four step process and now implement it through right thoughts, thoughts of empowerment, 
thoughts of confidence, thoughts of vision, when you can enhance it with feelings of confidence, feelings of competency, belief in yourself, when you can operate in a cycle of good habits, habits that support your vision, and when you can surround yourself with all the people who can help you manifest the skyscraper that is your life, then nothing is impossible. When you follow these principles, you literally create a vibrational experience that the world will respond to accordingly. If that vibrational experience is positive, empowering, the world will rush to support you. The people you need will show up and it will get done. So this is part one of our concept that decisions are the blueprints for your life. Next week, we're gonna do part two, which is how do you make right decisions? If every decision has consequences, and we know the four steps to making a decision, and we know the, the four steps to implementing a decision, then what are the stair steps? What are the, the key steps to making right decisions? Whew. Folks, thank you so much for joining us today. You know that you have the power to create the skyscraper that is your dreams, to have it manifest in your life through your feelings, to do the things that are congruent with manifesting it, and to surround yourself with people who can help you, uplift you, knowing that the best is yet to come. So it is. Thank you so much for being with us today. All of our lectures, all of our trainings are on our Success Mentorship Network. Those who would like to be, be a partner, Kenya is a part of our network. Be sure to join us at www.patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Success Mentorship Network. This is Dr. Herbert Harris signing off saying, thank you so much for being the person that you are, for doing the things that you do and for helping us create a world of vision full of light, love and potential. So it is.